first person to punt the midget off the Segway gets $5. That was a tweet that had a video of me on my Segway my first week of high school. Quite frankly, the very tip of the iceberg for cyberbullying. I was born with a very rare form of dwarfism called metatropic dysplasia. It affects my bone growth and my mobility. I first noticed when I was different, probably around four years old. It didn't really bother me up until maybe around eight or nine when my peers were growing taller and taller and I stayed the same size. And the teasing really became something that I could not escape. There were times that the teasing definitely outweighed the physical limitations, even the experiences and the excruciating pain of going through surgery and being in double leg casts for six months with metal hardware in my legs. That pain not being as bad as feeling so alone and like I was just too, too different to be here. That anger and the resentment really was something that I, I bottled up. Ultimately, that led me to wanting to end my life when I was 11. I was so desperate for it to be over with. I don't think my parents fully grasped how much I was suffering. After I had my suicide attempt, therapy truly was a godsend to me. It was something that changed the way that I saw the world and the way that I saw myself. That didn't necessarily make the bad or the pain go away, but it made me take control of my inner world in a way that I wasn't able to before. When I went from middle school to then high school, I remember being very, not just anxious, but I was quite uncertain to what would face me on the other side. My freshman year, I discovered that someone had created an Instagram account for the sole purpose of harassing, degrading, and humiliating me. They would literally take the images and the videos that I would post, distort them, edit it to a point of having vile rhetoric behind it. The cyberbullying ultimately escalated to the point of getting death threats. One of them said, if you don't kill yourself by Thursday, I'm gonna shank you in the kidney. The other said, Midget, you're the ugliest thing that I've ever seen. Go kill yourself. I genuinely did not know who was behind that. And that messed with my head so much. I went to the police on three different occasions when the threats came in via either email or Instagram. They refused to prosecute and said that it wasn't a specific enough threat. And because they didn't use you know, this word or that language, they weren't able to do anything. And so that was the answer that I continuously got. And I knew the only solution was to leave that school. I went into the administration's office and I said, I will be continuing the rest of my high school online. I no longer feel safe in your building. You all have done nothing to support my situation. Plus, no acknowledgement of personal responsibility and the role that we individually play and how literally one tweet, one text, one post could be all that it takes for somebody to end their life or to hurt somebody else. I decided to share my story and the hell that I had been through the last two years. I had so much extra time to be able to devote to speaking, to traveling all around the country, presenting to groups, and also to advocacy. My experiences with cyberbullying ultimately led my parents and I to getting two laws passed in Virginia. The piece of legislation that I'm most proud of is every single classroom, K through 12, in public schools across Virginia to have curriculum around empathy, emotional boundaries, overall 
personal emotions and having that be taught. These peers who were sending me the Instagram posts and the horrible comments and threats, I believe they really lacked empathy and compassion. They didn't have the ability to think about what it must be like in somebody else's shoes. The exact kids that bullied and targeted me the most, if they had gotten that curriculum, I really don't think those same things would have happened to me. I ultimately need to forgive them for being in that place of their life and feeling like they had no other outlet, no other choice but to show up in that way. I think compassion sometimes can literally be what stops somebody in their tracks from pressing send or from saying something incredibly hurtful to someone else because it's that ability to say, what is that impact gonna be on the other person? Is this how I should be treating them, putting out this sort of energy? Or is it something that might actually cause a lot of hurt? I genuinely think it's that compassion piece that is the inner voice telling us to keep going or to stop. My work helps people change the lens through which they see themselves and the world around them. Being able to see others for who they truly are starts with us.